In this video, I'm going to take a look at solving polynomial equations, and specifically, we're going to be looking at quadratics, so polynomials of degree 2. All right, and the method that I'm going to use is going to um, be focused on this zero product principle, all right, which basically just says that if the product of two algebraic expressions is zero, then at least one of the factors is equal to zero. So in other words, if I've got if a times b equals 0, then I know that either a equals 0 or b equals 0. So that's the, what we're going to focus on here with these uh, polynomials that are of degree 2. So let's look at this first example right here. Let's suppose I've got an x squared plus 4 equals 5x minus 12. All right, so to be able to implement this rule, I've got to get this equation set equal to zero. To do that, I've got to move those two equations to the left. Now, when I do that, I'm going to choose to do it um, and set it up so that my quadratic is in the order that I want it to be. So I'm going to subtract 8x, and I want that term to be next. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and show the plus 4 equals that negative 12. All right, now I can add 12 to both sides, and when I do that, then I've got my quadratic set up in the form that I want it to be. So x squared minus 8x, and then a um, positive 4, add 12 more to that, that's going to be a plus 16. Now, in order to be able to do this, I need two things multiplied together to equal this 0, so I'm going to attempt factoring. Okay, so I know I need an x and an x. I need two numbers that multiply to 16, but add to the negative 8. You can make a little chart if you wanted to make a little chart. There's lots of videos on there that I've done as well as other people, how to factor a basic trinomial like this. Hopefully at this point, if you're solving polynomial equations, the factoring is not a problem for you. So um, it's going to have to be a minus 4 and a minus 4. All right, and then on both of those, um, x is going to equal 4 because you set each one of them equal to 0. So this one gives you x equals 4. This one gives you x equals 4 as well. All right, and for some of you that might have noticed, this is a perfect square trinomial, so we could have done it that, well, that way as well. But guess and check works also. All right, now, every time that you solve one of these equations, you need to plug it back into the equation and check to see if it's true. All right, so I'll actually do that on this one, and then on the next two examples, I will leave that for you to do. All right, but if I'm saying x equals 4, then I need to check that in that equation. So in other words, is 4 squared plus 4 equal to 8 times 4 minus 12? Okay, so if I work this out, uh, let's see, I'd get a 16 plus 4 on this side, which would give me a 20. And over here, I'd have a 32 minus 12, which would also give me 20. All right, so it definitely does check. But whenever you solve one of these um, polynomial equations, you should always check your answers because you could have some extraneous roots down there. Now, if you need um, to put this in like say a set notation or write it as a solution set, all right, then because we could possibly have more than one answer, it's going to look something like that. If you need set notation or you want to write the solution set, okay? So x equals 4 on this first one. All right, now let's do just a couple more. All right, let's take a look at a 5x squared equals 20x. Okay, I need this set equal to 0, so I'm going to move everything to the left first. So 5x squared minus that 20x equals 0. All right, and here again, I don't have a trinomial, but I have two terms, and I can see very easily here that I've got a greatest common factor. So I'm going to take the greatest common factor of 5x out. If I take 5x out of this first term, 5 divided by 5 is 1. Two x's, take one of them out, I only have one left over. All right, 20 divided by 5, taking that out is going to leave me with a minus 4. x, taking the x out, I just have the 4. Okay, now at this point you're setting both things equal to zero. I have a product here that is set equal to zero, so I can set each one of them equal to zero. So 5x equal to zero, so that means x has to equal zero. And on this one then, x has to equal four. Okay, now here again, I have two possible answers, so you should do a check on both of them. The, the zero one is going to be easy to check. So if I plug zero in here, this is zero. I plug zero in, that's zero. If I plug four in, 4 squared is 16 times 5 is going to be 80. 4 times 20 is going to be 80. So they both do check. So my solution set is 0, 4. All right, and on this last one. Okay, now, 
Oh, the number one common mistake on this one is people forget that it's the zero product rule. And they try, here, here's a product and here's a number over here. So I see a lot of students take this x minus 7 and try to set it equal to the negative 20 and x plus 5 and try to set it equal to that negative 20. Alright, that does not work because this is not the zero product rule because this is not zero. Alright, so you cannot do that and the only reason I pointed out is because a lot of students attempt to do that. So, the only way to do this, you have to FOIL this out first. Okay, you have to take this expression on the left hand side, FOIL it out, multiply it all out, and then move that minus 20 over. Okay, so when I FOIL this out, I'm going to have an x squared, and then a minus 7x, and a plus 5x, and a minus 35, and then it's still equal to that negative 20 because I haven't done anything with it. Now, I can add like terms here, and I can add 20 to both sides to get a zero on that right hand side, which is what I want. So I'm going to have an x squared. Putting those two terms together, I'll have a minus 2x. And then negative 35 plus 20, moving that over, is going to give me a minus 15 equals zero. Now I'm back to a nice little trinomial here that hopefully is going to factor. Of course, if it didn't factor, you know, we wouldn't be using the zero product rule. We'd have to be using quadratic formula or something along those lines. All right, so I need an x and an x, two numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to a negative 2. So I think that's going to be a plus 3 and a minus 5. All right, and then setting both of those equal to 0. This is going to give you the x equals negative 3. This is going to give you the x equals 5. All right, and then here again, you need to check both of those answers in that equation, and I will leave you to do the actual check there. Um, I'm almost positive that they both do work. So my solution set here is a negative 3 and a 5. Alright, so just three basic examples here of using that zero product rule to be able to solve some polynomial equations and specifically quadratic <coughs> equations. Uh, definitely thanks for watching, and be sure and share with your friends. Thanks.